Hello everyone, in this video I'll be doing a tier list of the Elden Ring Legacy Dungeons. Now, there's some really great ones here. I think Elden Ring is a 10 out of 10 perfect game. And I want to talk about some of these different locations that we got to go to. The first one being Castle Morn, which is typically the first place you go to for a Legacy-ish dungeon in Elden Ring. This is in the Weeping Peninsula. Now, there is the Linone Misbegone boss here, so it's a pretty okay uh, spot i'm gonna put it in the b tier because well it is a pretty cool castle you climb up you hop down the back side and you go down it is a cool spot it's just outshined by a lot of other spots now what's funny about castle morn is if this was a different game uh that would be like a s tier but just because the other ones are a little bit better i would say i'm gonna put that one into b tier now i think that has a pretty good boss fight at the end it's pretty well challenging for an early game fight before you get it yourself into Stormvale Castle, which I think is an incredible legacy dungeon. It's a big, huge castle. Uh, you can go the quick way. Like, if you've played this game multiple times, like I'm, I'm on 10 playthroughs now, you'll know how to get through here very quickly. But if it's your first time, you're going to take a long time getting through here. And I think that it's a nice slow burn of a level. Well, it's not the absolute best here. It's still a really great spot. I'm tempted to put it in the S tier, I really like Stormvale Castle, but I just, again, I think that the, some of the other options here are just a little bit better, so it's kind of hard for me to justify putting in, putting all these locations in S tier, so I'm going to put it in the A tier. For the first true legacy dungeon, this is a really great spot. Godric the Grafted, not that difficult of a boss fight, but I just think the aesthetic of Stormvale is really cool. Um, it's a big, huge castle. And I think that it's what what makes it a really cool spot is once you beat the castle, you're overlooking Larry of the Lakes, and it's a gorgeous view. So yeah, A tier. Next we have Carrion Manor, which I think it's a pretty decent spot. I it it's it's I mean, there's like some gross hand bosses you gotta fight. Um it's not the largest legacy dungeon. I think it goes in B or C tier. I might put it in the C tier. Uh just the Loretta boss fight's pretty fun. You have to do this whole legacy dungeon. It's not really a legacy dungeon. We have to do this whole location before you get to the Ronnie quest line, which is the most popular quest line in Elden Ring. So I, I think it's a pretty good spot, but uh, I like what comes after a lot more. And I think that the Academy of Rhea Lucaria is a much better spot. So I want to put the... I guess I'll get on to the point of this one. Rhea Lucaria is a really cool spot. This is like... Hogwarts basically you got big Burger King looking head guys and it's just it got a really cool aesthetic to it I really want to put this one in the S tier as well but I just feel like it's outshined by some other spots as well this is another one that you can get really good at speed running if you've done it many times like myself same as Stormvale Castle you can just rip through this place the big downside the boss fight run from the last grace to Renala the boss so long it reminds me of like demon souls it's it's not as bad as like demon souls or any of the older souls games but it's still kind of a drag to run all the way up the stairs and have that big ball come at you if you don't take out the enemies above it's not the worst but um yeah it's still an a tier I, I think it's a great spot really cool i love the the like the hollowing music that plays in the background it's a really cool spot a tier red main castle now this is I don't even know if you consider this a legacy dungeon. I'm I'm, I'm going to put it in the C tier just because Radon's a great boss fight, but you can literally just, once you get to the Altus Plateau, you can run back to Red Main Castle, and there's like a teleporter in Kaled that'll send you right to where you need to go. So you can bypass most of this whole area. I feel like it could have been more, I don't know, you could have done more there or just not have the teleporter. But most times that you play through this, you're going to end up just going straight to Radon and fighting him anyway. So I want to put that in the C tier. Next, we have Nokrin Internal City. This is an S tier. What's cool about Nokrin is you go down this really long elevator and it feels like you're going down and down and down. And then you start to see these stars in the sky and then you realize how huge Elden Ring is. So Nokrin's got a lot of... It doesn't really have a boss. It has the the uh, tree spirit, but it's not that hard of a fight. And you just have to light a few belfries around the area to fight it. It's a decent boss fight, but this area, gorgeous. I catch myself often anytime I'm in Nokrin. I just sit there and just take in the views. And there's not many games that I would do that with. Now, Elden Ring's not a perfect graphical game. 
the art style is though i think the art style in elden ring is phenomenal so Nocran eternal city beautiful spot beautiful beautiful spot and to follow up with Nox stella eternal city i am also going to put that up in the s tier these are really gorgeous locations in Elden Ring, and they're a whole lot of fun to explore because it's just cool. The whole vibe of being underground and then still seeing like the stars up in the sky is really nice. You have to beat Radon to be able to get to these locations as he's holding the stars up in the sky, and then they smash down, opens up a crater into the earth that you can go explore. And um, yeah, I, I think that this this Noxtella is really gorgeous. The Dragonkin Soldier Noxtella is not a hard boss, um, but just the overall aesthetic of both these areas is great, and I think that they're a lot of fun to even run through multiple times. The Ruin Struin Precipice. This is a decent spot. Um, you have to go through this if you want to get to um, if you want to get to the Altus Plateau without using the Grand Lift of Rolled. So I'm going to put that in C tier. It is it is a good spot, but. I think that some of the other locations are a bit better than it. Uh, you have to fight the magma worm there to get to the to get to Altus Plateau. It's a pretty good spot, but it's again a lot of these locations would be S tier in other games. But since they're in Elden Ring, they're being compared to other spots in Elden Ring. So I just think that there are better locations. Still a great spot though. It's cool. You're climbing up. You go through a bunch of different locations. You go up ladders. You're coming back outside. You're going into caves. It's got a whole lot of different things going on. Next, we got the Shaded Castle, and this is a decent spot. Uh, you fight Elmer the Briar here. It's got a lot of poison. People love that, and Miyazaki loves to throw that into Souls games. I'm going to put the Shaded Castle somewhere, I would say C tier to B tier, somewhere around there. Um, it's really not that large of a spot to get to. Like, you jump up over the wall, you go around, explore through. It's not super memorable compared to a lot of the other locations here, so I can't justify putting it any higher than the C tier, but it is a great spot overall. I think that it has a really great boss fight too. Elmer of the Briar is underrated. Next we got Volcano Manor, and I think Volcano Manor goes in the B tier. This you don't you don't do a whole lot there. Most of the Volcano Manor quests are outside of Volcano Manor. But I think the whole, like, the journey to get there is really cool. Climbing up the mountain, Mel Gelmir. I think the Volcano Manor is honestly pretty underrated as a, as a legacy dungeon. Not a lot of people are talking about it because, again, most of Volcano Manor happens outside of Volcano Manor, which is not ideal. I wish there was more to do here, but there is a Godskin Noble fight, and it's pretty good. I think the aesthetic here is cool, too, having the lava. I love seeing the bridge rise up through the lava. That part was really nice, so that goes in the B tier. Next, we got Landell Royal Capital, and this is top of the S tier. I think Landell is probably my favorite uh, of the Legacy Dungeons. It's just gorgeous. When you first step out and overlook the whole city, it's just mind-blowing how large and scale it is. You can go into so many different buildings. There's a replica of Round Table Hold there. There's so much going on in Landell. It's got to be one of my favorites. When you're first getting into Landell, you're greeted by the... Uh, the little doot doot guys there i forget their names but from that moment on you're just it's just an it's just full of exploration there's so many different spots to go around it's also very challenging now you can like i do speed run this area often like i do have a few videos on my youtube channel of me speed running through Landell cuz you can rip through it in about 5 minutes if you really put your heart into it even less than that i think i got like 4 minutes or so but your first time ever doing that, not going to happen. I think I think I spent like five hours in Landell before I even got to any of the bosses just because there's so much to do there. There's a lot of different spots to go to. I think there's around like 10 or 12 graces there. So there's a lot of safe spots. But in between them, you actually are running quite a bit. So if you don't know where to go, you can't watch my video. You can, you can find the way that way or just explore. It's a lot of fun in Landell. Next, we got Castle Soul, which <laughs> I'm going to put in the F tier. Yeah. Uh, Castle Soul has some things to like, but it also has a lot of frustrations. Um, I don't hate Castle Soul, don't get me wrong. I just think that the others are a little bit better. It's also quite frustrating. The run from the last grace to the to the boss fight. And the the boss, Commander Nile, I've had friends that quit Elden Ring because of him. He has a challenging boss fight, but you can use the bewitching branches to turn his allies against him. So there are some ways to kind of cheese him. Um Castle Soul is 
it's a cool spot, but I want to put it in the F tiers because <laughs> I have a stream on my YouTube channel. You can check it out where I was doing 20 squats every single time I died in Elden Ring. I ended up doing 440 squats in that one stream, and most of them were at Castle Soul. So I have some very dark memories of this place. <laughs> Next, we got Mogwin Palace. I think this is another S tier. And hear me out on this. Some people hate this spot, but. I think it's really cool. The whole area, it's got like bloody water. There's the Albinarix, so you can get tons of runes there. It's got so it's got a lot of everything for everyone. To get to the Moog boss fight, you have to climb up to that area there that you see. It's gorgeous. It's similar to Nocran and Noxtella, that it has like that overhead star view that I think is really nice looking. It's got a lot of things going for it. There's some really interesting, like, ghost-type enemies that pop up out of the ground. and it's It's got lots of jump scares. Uh, it's got a dark cave that you got to run through. It's It's got it all, honestly. Mogwin Palace. And it's going to be the location that takes you to the DLC. So, there's a lot going on here. And I think that Mogwin's Palace, it has the best weapon in the game. Mogwin's Sacred Spear, I think, is... Honestly, people say Rivers of Blood is the best. I think Mogwin's Sacred Spear is even better. That Blood Boon Ritual weapon art can completely shred down bosses. So not only is it a gorgeous spot, you get a really good weapon there too. Next we got... I can't see... Oh, that's Malig... Michaela's Halig Tree, an Elf Ale. I think that... I'm going to put this in the S tier too. This is a very difficult spot to traverse through. It's a challenge to get from... Like, I don't want to know how many deaths that I had in the Halig Tree, but... It sucks. You're starting off on these ugly branches with a bunch of annoying enemies that'll hit you from range. And you gotta make your way down through these little pathways, and then you go fight Loretta, the true form. And then you actually get to Elf Ale, which is the true legacy dungeon there. And it's huge, difficult, full of difficult enemies, the Clean Rot Knights. Um, <laughs> this mod, I always run through and I'm screaming, because it's, it's challenging. It's probably the most challenging uh, legacy dungeon in Elden Ring, but it's also gorgeous, so... I think it's S tier. Finally, we've got the Crumbling Pharaoh Missoula, and this is also another one that I'm very fond of. You have to go through this area as part of the main story. You do not have to go to Alphael or Mogren's Palace. Actually, Landell is really the only spot that you have to go to in the in all these that I selected. Um, Landell and Crumbling Pharaoh Missoula are really the only spots. So you can choose whatever uh, Shard Bearer boss you want to fight. But uh, you do have to go to Crumbling Fair in Missoula after fighting the Fire Giant. And then you have to fight Malekith here. I was stuck at Castle Soul and Crumbling Fair of Missoula. But my experiences with Crumbling Fair of Missoula is much better. It's a gorgeous spot though. One thing that I really like is how the lighting is in the, uh, in the Fair of Missoula. The lighting's so dynamic. It's very interesting. Now it does have, I think, the most hard boss in Elden Ring for new players with Malekith. I died to Malekith like 50 times is what it is. You gotta learn somehow. Now I can beat Malekith pretty easily, but at first it was quite the challenge. So not only do we get a really nice location with tons of dragons, there's multiple boss fights here, but you also have one of the best boss fights I think in all of Souls. So I'm gonna put Crumbling Fair Missoula in the S tier as well. And I guess I'm not gonna rank these in any specific order. All the S tiers here, Laindel, Nokrin, Noxtella, Mogram Palace, Alphael, and Crumbling Fair Missoula. And also a tier, Rhea Lucari and Stormville Castle. So there it is. That's my tier list of locations, or legacy dungeons, I guess, in Elden Ring. Let me know in the comments where you would rank these. And I will see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video fun or useful, please hit the subscribe button below.